Hello everybody, I'm Joseph Tierney from Insights and Automation, and today we're going to be going through three of the projects from the official Arduino Starter Kit Projects book. The kit contains the components for up to 14 different projects, but today we're going to be going over three that I feel give the best introduction to the key functions and capabilities of the Arduino chip in regards to basic maker tinkering in the future. For this video, we'll be relying on the example code for the projects provided in the Arduino IDE under the Starter Projects tab. But if you would like a step-by-step -step course going over the individual projects and how to code them, as well as assembling their circuits, check out the link in the description to give us your feedback and if you'd be interested in such a course. To start off, we'll be going over project number two in the book, called Spaceship Interface. I'll be following the diagram provided in the book, displayed here. As you can see, I've already assembled the Arduino and breadboard onto their project shield, and begun working through the diagram to assemble the circuit. One thing I ran into when assembling this kit is the difference in parts. We're going to need two 20 ohm resistors, and according to the book, I'll need a three band resistor that's red, red, brown coded. However, the one included in my kit is a four band red, red, black, black resistor. It took me a good 10 minutes of searching, followed by Googling, to discover that I had been supplied with a different type of 220 ohm resistor. This isn't touched upon in the book until page 41, where a diagram of the potential resistors included are displayed. In my opinion, this should have been at the front of the book, so those working through projects don't get lost thinking they're missing a piece. This continues with the jumpers, where the diagram displays red and black jumpers used on the board, despite the only small-scale jumpers being a variety of yellow, orange, green, and gray. For that reason, the colors on my circuit may not align with yours. With everything put together, let's take a look at how it all functions. Our Starship is ready for hyperdrive. Our next project is the keyboard instrument which will produce four different tones when pressing the four different buttons. I chose these projects because I felt they were easy enough to get someone new to electronics started, but I also felt they did a good job representing the variety in which Arduinos can be used. In the first one, we were creating a series of lights to respond to human input. Now, we're creating a small instrument to play notes through input. Our next project will focus on using the Arduino and external controls to manipulate a computer program. All these things are small, simple executions of what the Arduino is capable of doing on the large scale. Instead of small LEDs, you could have the Arduino control a whole suite of lights and devices across a home. Instead of four tones, you could run an entire instrument kit and speaker system with the Arduino at the heart. And of course, you can create a custom control interface for various software solutions using the capabilities of the Uno and other Arduino designs. Now, with the circuit finished, let's try it out. Sounds good to me. For our final project, we'll be using the potentiometer to modify an image on our computer. This project requires a program called Processing which is a Java-based coding language that Arduino's IDE is based on. After we finish building this circuit, we need to go into both the IDE and processing and set up the code. We'll also need the URL of the Arduino logo. The link provided in the example code no longer works, so I have provided another link to the Arduino logo that as of now works, as well as a link to an Insights and Automation logo to use in its place if you'd like. Now. Let's see how this program reacts when I start turning the dial. Look at that! Controlling the color of the image from an external Arduino-powered controller. There's a litany of other projects to check out in the book, so make sure you pick up your own kit and give it a shot. In the future, we'll be going over other kits available and their applications in comparison to this one, both in terms of price and project breadth and ease of use. To make sure you catch those videos as they come out, be sure to subscribe to Insights and Automation and keep an eye out on our blog for the accompanying articles. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.